Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Pixel Boy. So this is a forthcoming title. This is currently, I believe, in Alpha, and they're looking to get this green lit on Steam. It's by a company called Giant Box Games, which consists of two people, and it is a top-down action RPG of some description with some curious twists. It's already got some pretty funky music. Hmm. Might end up doing the entire video jiving backwards and forwards. Like some kind of turkey. Bwok bwok. Alright. Let us begin then, shall we? Let's have a look at Pixel Boy. See what's going on with it. I'll go with a... Yeah, let's, let's just go with a new game and start it off again. So, it has a rather interesting graphic style, as you're about to see when we pop out into the town. Yeah. So, this might remind you of a number of things. This is reminiscent of a game by the name of... 3D Dot Game Heroes. Also, forthcoming titles like... Castle Story and Cube World, a number of things like that. It's got, it's actually really nice. Like, I genuinely appreciate the style they've got here. Really nice casting of shadows and things like that. The uh, geometrical shapes do actually convey a very cool aesthetic, which I didn't necessarily expect. I thought, oh, it's going to be gimmicky. It's got the deliberately pixely character here. Animation quality is not exactly great, and, but the overall aesthetic is pretty cool. So what is it all about? Well, it's basically, it's a really, really minimal action RPG, or at least it is at the beginning. And the purpose is to travel as far through the dungeon as humanly possible. So let's go into the dungeon. Let's find out what's going on. Straight into the dungeon. I am Pixel Boy. I'm going to kill the evil demons or whatever. And I'm going to do so by shooting them with pixels. It is actually as simple as that. Let's try and open the doors to the dungeon. Alright, I was wondering if maybe I could actually blow them up with the large explosive barrel, but it doesn't look like it. This is your only attack. Now, some of you might already be turning this video off. It's like, what the hell is this crap? You really want me to green light something that simple? This wouldn't have been complicated in 1982. And you are right. However... As with most games like this, there is something under the hood. The question is, can we actually find it? It does take about 10 minutes to really find out what the hell's going on with it. Now, in the blurb for this game, it described it as having a very unique power-up system. Now, the power-up system allows for three different power-ups to be equipped at any given time, and they also basically stack on top of each other. So, you can create, they were saying something along the lines of like 516 different combinations of power-ups, and some of them can end up being absolutely ridiculous. The whole idea of a gun that shoots guns, yeah, that's basically what I'm talking about. Now, there is a rudimentary level up system in the game where you have five different attributes. You spend points in order to go into those different attributes, and every time you level up, you do get all of your health back. The levels actually do appear to be randomly generated because this is not the same as the first one I went through. And if we were to look at the map here, we'll notice the layout. So I imagine everything is generated with rooms that are essentially square, and there are various traps and monsters in each of them. This takes me back in the other direction, so let's not go there. So, it does have, apparently, some roguelike elements to it, and once you die, you do indeed die. It is possible, I believe, to respawn and continue where you left off, but you will lose all of your score. So, the whole point of the game, I suppose, is score attack. There seems to be a shop at the end of every level as well, which you can spend coins in order to buy a variety of different things. And there are treasure chests, and those have a lot of the power-ups in them. I don't know what I just picked up. I have to assume that that was a coin. I'm gonna try and clear this level out. And these enemies are not particularly difficult. And usually just pick them off without them really shooting you, so... Not exactly a challenge thus far, but... It's a roguelike, and roguelikes have a tendency of starting off nice and easily easy, and then horrible things happen to you. You get murdered in a wide variety of different ways. Roguelikes have an interesting thing going for them in that they almost always have the same attitude. Losing is fun. And it is, actually. It, it genuinely is in certain situations, if, of course, you design the game right. Losing's also got to be satisfying. It's got to be rewarding. The game's got to be difficult in an enjoyable way, not in a frustrating way. And in this game, I'm just very, very cautiously making my way from room to room, trying to dodge as many attacks as possible. Now, this is the treasure room. Can I open one? There we go. So this is what I was talking about. This is one of the power-ups. Now, I only have enough keys for one, but this is a shot that will slow my opponent. So, yeah, that's kind of neat. 
I've cleared the dungeon, so I'm gonna try and find the rest of the pieces of the key. Now, also, if I were to go back to the shop, then I should be able to get another dungeon key, and that might allow me to get a second power-up from those chests, which would be quite nice. Let's have words with him. Do I have the cash for it? I... I think I do. There we go. Excellent. Yoink. So, let's go and open another box and see if I can get a second power-up. Alright, what do we got? I shall eat the mushroom. Okay, so that was a mushroom rather than a power-up, and that gave me plus one damage. And let's just do a few more upgrades. It's got fire rate and range. There we go. All right, and then move on to the second level. Excellent. All right, I assume I still have my slow shot. Yes, you'll see the power-ups in the corner there. Now, nastier beasties are abound. Now, there is something I would like to point out at least once the music really gets going, is that the music for this game is really, really good. It's by an artist called Pyramid, who I've not heard of before, but I'm definitely going to pay attention to now. Because the the style is... It's a little bit old school, it, deliberately using these old school kind of Amiga tracker sounds, and I very much appreciate that style, especially in video games. So I'm going to shut up for a minute or so and let you listen to the music. As you can hear, this is pretty cool. Uh, this has actually got a really cool soundtrack to it. Very, very Amiga-esque, which is totally awesome, actually. This, you know, funnily enough, this game actually reminds me of Pineapple Smash Crew, not only in its graphical style, but also in its choice of music. All right. Interesting. So there's another power-up. Let's learn more about it. Press Q to use. This will freeze time. So awful lot of different things available in this game. Now, the question I have to ask, really, and it, I was actually very sad to stop the music there. The question I have to ask is, does this really basic combat system actually keep me interested in the game, even though there is this more complex power-up system involved in it? Does that give it sufficient depth? Does it make me enjoy it enough to get past the fact that it is just a case of holding down the button and shooting stuff? Yeah, I don't know if I, I don't know if it does. I I'm not sure yet. I think it, maybe it's because I haven't seen some of the really ridiculous power up combinations as of yet. But I'm not having a huge amount of fun just shooting stuff. It's okay, but I, there's just something inside of me that's screaming for more depth, more depth, more depth. It's like, come on, I need something else for my combat. Otherwise, my combat isn't all that satisfying. I think maybe I've gotten past the point where a very simplistic combat system will really do it for me is a little sad because it would mean that I would miss out on games that obviously have quite a few interesting ideas in and this game does and it's really nicely presented if you like this kind of aesthetic I assume some people would think it's absolutely hideous and I wouldn't even blame them for that either honestly it's deliberately designed in this particular way it's got this kind of modern pixel art style to it and it utilized a lot of geometric shapes and Obviously colorful pixels. That's its whole point. You know, it is called pixel boy after all. Is that appealing enough to some people? Mm, questionable really. And the gameplay is Just at this point very simplistic and I, I guess you've got to have the tolerance to 
really go further into the title to then even enjoy it for what it is. All right, my fire rate is currently capped as a result of something that I picked up. I'm not actually sure what it is. Probably something to do with some of my power-ups there, so it's kind of unfortunate, but I guess we'll upgrade the damage in the process. All right, let's open the chest, see what we get. All right, pixel shield. Wonderful. Uh-oh. There we go. So I assume that's going to absorb some damage coming in my direction. I think it's maybe because I haven't seen any of the really crazy power-up combinations yet, but I would imagine they're going to scale that in such a way that you don't get them immediately, because that would just be really, really silly. They want to have at least some progression in the game. So I'm thinking maybe I can actually hit the box there, but I didn't succeed in doing that. Let's go and have another look in the chests before we continue forward to the next level. I think maybe, just maybe, there might have to be more to it. At this point... Hmm, that's, that's alright. Yeah, that's kind of cool. As you can see, it stacks with a number of different things. We'll go with that. So, did I lose my slow shot? Yeah, I'm okay with losing my slow shot. I'm not really all that worried about it. So what caps speed to one? Caps fire to one, so the Heat Seeker caps it. Hmm. I don't know if I even want the Heat Seeker. I mean, it's nice to be able to have it move around corners, but to have my fire rate capped so badly is... Hmm, not necessarily great. So I think I'm going to drop that. And then I'm going to grab this. Would maybe be nice if the interface was a little better. As it's, it's slightly clunky. Takes a little bit too long, I think, to go through and drop the power-ups that I want. Something properly mouse-controlled would be nice, I think, and there's nothing necessarily stopping them from doing that. Once again, this game is very much in alpha, so there is a lot of room for change and improvement. But I can see what they're trying to do. Hmm. Do I want that? I think maybe I do. There we go, split shot. Yeah, I'll, have, I'll definitely have that over the shield. Let's go through to the next level. But I can also see a lot of people complaining, this game is really simplistic, and it's like, yeah, it, it actually really, really is, and I suppose there... Oh, stupid bloody thing. I suppose there is a place for that, certainly. But I have to wonder how long I would keep playing this. I mean, things would have to get absolutely ridiculous, and then do I really have the patience to replay it from the start? If I lose all of my power-ups, there'd have to be enough power-up variety, I think, in the game. And this split shot's actually made it even harder to hit stuff. There'd have to be enough power-up variety to, for each play to be different. There is a randomly generated dungeon system, which is cool. I definitely like that. But... Are there enough power-ups in the game? They're, they're offering a certain number of combinations. That doesn't seem like there's that many. I think maybe they just have to go crazy with it. I just put in so many different power-ups that the game is really stacked full of replayability. And at the moment, I don't necessarily think it's got it. There we go. I'm dead. It happens. So I can keep my score and start again from level one, or I can lose my score and go through the elevator there. And that's, that's basically Pixel Boy in a nutshell. It's, you, that is what you do. So I think maybe it just needs more to it. It's a nice proof of concept and I like where they're going with it, but I would like to see more depth. And honestly, if you're going to expect people to pay for something like this, and especially green light it, then I think it's maybe going to have just a little bit more to it initially. It's definitely got potential and it is still quite impressive for a game that is... Yeah, that's that's actually me, isn't it, by the looks of it? It is it's pretty impressive for a game that's developed by two people. They could go places with it. They could. I just... I, I think at the moment that there's not quite enough to it. But once again, this is in alpha. It doesn't have a release date. So it very well could go into some interesting areas. My name is Total Biscuit. I've had to look at Pixel Boy right here. And you can green light it if you so desire. The link is in the description below this video. And I'll see you next time.